Now here's a really cool technique for creating a grid, the sorted grid element that has kind of a 3D effect to it, and it could be used uh, as a background design element or something like that. It's really neat. So, first thing I need to do is actually create the element that's going to create the grid. So I do that by creating a new document. And I'm actually going to set it to a half inch by half inch at 100 dpi. All that looks good. I'm going to leave it. Okay. So we have this really small graphic, but I'm going to zoom in a lot here so I can actually see what I'm doing. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually on the background layer, if I bring the layers palette in here so you can see, I'm going to shift delete and fill that layer with gray. And then I'm going to create a new layer. Then I'm going to do Command or Control A to select all. And with white set as my foreground color here, I'm going to go under Edit to Stroke. And we're going to set a three pixel stroke with white. And we're going to make sure it's on the inside because we don't want any part of it going on the outside since our selection is right to the edge here. We'll do that and hit OK. Now, I want to delete part of this because this is going to be part of a grid pattern. It's going, to be, it's going to be the single element of a grid pattern that we're going to create. Now, in order to make it work, I'm going to have to delete part of this. Now, because this uh, stroke here is only three pixels wide, I'm going to use my arrow keys because they will only move the selection one pixel at a time every time I hit the key. So I'm just going to nudge this over one, two, three. Then I'm going to nudge it down one, two, three. And then I'm going to hit delete. So there I have which is going to be part of the grid graphic that we're going to create. And you'll see how that works in a minute. So here I have the elements that's going to make up my grid. I'm going to do select all once again. Then I'm going to go under edit to define pattern. And there we've gone and created what's going to be ultimately our grid. I'm just going to call this grid one. So there. So that's done. I no longer need this document, so I'm just going to close it. Don't save. Don't need it. I'm going to make a new document here, which I've already created. Now, I've got nothing on the background here yet, so I'm going to go ahead and create a colored background. We'll go ahead and gear and get a blue, because I like blue. We'll just fill that in. To give it a little variation, I'm actually going to create a new layer. And with my gradient tool, using the same exact color, I'm just going to draw a gradient, just an arbitrary placement of a gradient there. Now we don't see it because it's the exact same color as the background color is, is itself. So in order to give it some variation, I'm going to simply change the blending mode to multiply. And there we get a little, of, a little bit of difference there. I'm just going to do my command or control E to merge that down. So now we have that all in the background layer there. Now I'm going to create a new layer once again. And now we're going to go to shift delete, bring up our fill dialog. But now instead of a color, we're going to go over here to Pattern. And here we're going to select that, there's that pattern we just uh, created a second ago. It's, it's just a pattern element. And you'll see it will tile automatically and fill the entire document with this layer. Now, one thing to note, I've got this document, let me cancel out of this before I continue on. I've got this document set at a fairly high resolution because I want the grid to be kind of small, just kind of a small panel grid. And you saw that I made it a half inch. If I had made it a half inch by half inch at 250 dpi, as you see here, we would get a pretty big squares in our grid. And I want it to be a relatively small squares in the grid. So with the original pattern icon set to a smaller resolution and our document set to a much higher resolution, we're going to get much more squares in our grid. So going back to my fill dialog, go to pattern. And we've got that pattern selected. So when I hit OK here, you'll see what happens. There it is going ahead and filled that entire layer with that grid, with that one element. Because there are parts that next to each other in a tiling pattern, we get the illusion. We get the result of a big grid here. Now, I'm going to bring up my free transform. That's Command or Control T. And then I'm going to also hold down my Control key on the Mac, right click on the PC, or if you have a three button mouse, three or two button mouse, let's bring up this little menu here. I'm going to go to Warp. And here, there's no formula for how I'm distorting this. I'm just simply grabbing areas inside this shape, and just what warp, the Warp tool is allowing me to do is just manipulate this pretty much in any direction I want to go with it. I can just play with this all day, maneuver these curve handles over here until I get 
a really interesting effect with that grid. And once I got something I like, I'll just simply commit it by hitting enter. And because, and this is another reason I'm using a, a large res file, is when you distort a graphic like this, it has very fine lines. You'll want to use high res because you don't want your lines to look really, really jagged like that. You can see they're relatively smooth. Now, I want it to blend in nicely with my background, and this is the reason I chose gray as the background when I created that element. So when I change the blending mode of this to overlay, you'll see that it blends in very nicely. If I just position this any place on my document, and if I go ahead and give it a layer mask and go over here, and let's just paint here, paint there, just kind of have it like a fading in and out effect going like there, and I can even duplicate this layer and perhaps go over here to transform and then rotate it. And just kind of position it. So we're kind of getting a variation of the background here. And if I just toss in some design elements, there you see we've got a really interesting background we've created right from scratch, just using a few simple techniques right here in Photoshop. So there you go. Give it a try. We'll see you next time.